Hello, this is Anjana and welcome to the sixth session on Ruby on Rails. In the previous session, we completed all the CRUD actions for the resource product. We also added links for show, edit and delete product on the main product listing page. In this session, we will introduce you to active record validations. Validations are used to ensure that only valid data is saved into your database. For instance, we would not want to save a product which lacks information with regards to name of the product and price of the product. A product can afford to not have the description but not the previous two attributes. Model level validations are the best way to ensure that only valid data is saved into your database. Rails provides us built-in helpers to achieve this. Let's open the product model. and. Let's add a validation for na the name attribute. So we would specify validates name and presence to ensure that uh, value is present and length specifying the minimum number of characters required for this field. So this line will ensure that all products will have a name that is at least five characters long. Let's open the Rails console. By typing Rails console, the command prompt. This opens an environment that lets you interact with your Rails application. Now let's try out the newly added validation here by trying to save an empty product. Uh, let's assign this to a, an object, a variable product, and let's try saving it without specifying any attribute or any value. And it rolls back, returning a false. This is because the validation was triggered at the time we tried to save it. And since no name was supplied, it marked the object as invalid. At this point, Active Record will not perform the insert operation. This avoids storing an invalid object into the database. Now, how do we know that the object is invalid? There are two ways to find out. One, there is a method called valid, which verifies whether or not an object is valid. Let's try using that method against our product object. And just as we expected, it returns false, which means the product is not valid. The other way is to call the errors method on the object. So this returns a collection of errors, if any. By definition, an object is valid if this collection is empty after running validations. So let's make this a little bit more meaningful and tr try uh, another method called any. And just as the name suggests, it checks to see if there are any errors. And there are, so it returns true. Now we can make use of the full messages method to get all the error messages associated with the product object. So let's call full messages. And this returns a list of all the messages associated with this product object. Now let's make use of this feature in our template. We would need to notify the user when he or she tries to create a new product without providing sufficient information. So let's open the new.html.erb template and let's check for errors for the product object and display those errors error messages if any. So let's do a check first to see if there are any errors and if there are then we would like to print out the total number of errors prohibited this product 
from being saved and let's list those errors to the user let's open a ul and let's access the address collection and get the f all the full messages and lights iterate through the loop msg and let's open a list tag and let's print out the message let's close the list tag and let's wrap this around a div and save it just uh, walk through over what is happening here so here we are first checking to see if there are any errors while attempting to save the product. If there are, then we provide a statistics on how many errors were generated using the count method. Then we iterate through each error in the collection and print out each error message neatly. So let's open the browser and try creating a new product. And since we have not started the web server, nothing comes up. So let's start our web server. Let's exit out of the Rails console and start up our Rails web server. And let's go back and refresh the page. Now we see a error for undefined method errors for nil class. That's because we have not defined our product object or assigned any instance variable to be available in the view. So let's open the products controller and go to the new action where the error occurred and let's define a product object and save it and let's go back to the form and refresh. There you see your form. So let's try creating a product without a name and let's try saving it. And it says no route matches show this is because we have still some work in our products controller create action. Now, when you enter the details, when you're in the new uh, .html.erb, you would submit to the create action and the create action would save the product here. Now, it should not save the product if there are errors. So right now there are errors and it tries to save it and we are redirecting to show and providing it the product ID. If you do not save a product, you will not have the ID and that is why it errors out. So to along with the error uh, code that we have added to new.html.erb, we have to take care of the errors here as well. So we have to check to see if the product save was successful. The product save will return a false if it was not successful, just as we saw in when we were trying it out in the Rails console. So if the product save, save was successful, then only we would redirect to the show action else we would need to render the new product form so let's go back to our form and let's try putting in a product with no name and saving it and it neatly lists the errors associated with that object so we did not provide a name so the name can't be blank and obviously the name does not have a, does not satisfy the minimum five character limit now this is for the new dot new product form the same goes with the edit product form so let's copy over the changes or the, let's copy over the product errors check to the edit dot html dot erb at the top and save it and also update the update action this time because the edit gets submitted to the update action and if the update was successful then we would need to redirect to 
the show page else we will need to render back the edit template so if you notice here in our previous session we specified params permit name description and price in the update operation the update action I have moved that down I have uh, removed that code and replaced it with product params to um, remove the duplication in code so you have the product params that is used in two places at the time of creation of new products we would access the params as well as at the time of updation so this avoids code duplication I just thought I'd mention that now m moving on to the next item which is the other two attributes now let's add some validation for the attributes description and price as well make so that we can make use of some more validation options and learn some more um, helpers that the uh, that rails provides us with so let's go back to the product model and add validations for the description and price so for description let's say that we would need to have a minimum number of characters of 10 and let's say we only accept alphabets so there is a format option that this helper provides us with that takes in a width option that is a regular expression so since we will only accept alphabets it should start with an alphabet it can be any alphabet any lowercase alphabets from A to Z or capital A to Z one or more characters and it should end in an alphabet too so that is what A and Z stand for and let's close the regular expression and let's also enhance it with another option that reads gives us that's the message option where you can specify your own custom message and not just use the default rails error message so you can specify only letters allowed and save it so let's try this out in our rails console let's uh, stop the server and type rails console and let's define a variable product and specify product dot new and let's give a name testing and let's give a description let's say nil to see what happens so let's try saving the product and it does not save because um, of errors and let's see the errors collection and it says the description is too short description only letters allowed so let's add a description and give it some numbers and a text and this time let's start let's save it and again it doesn't save so let's check the error messages and it says description only letters allowed and it also doesn't satisfy the minimum 10 character limit because of numbers present so this time let us give it a good description description and let's try saving it 
and this time only letters allowed it's probably because the A description that we have given has a space because the regular expression does not have any space it only talks about small letters and capital letters so let's add an option to accept space and let's go back to the console and let's reload it like this now let's redefine the product and try saving it and this time the product saved successfully now let's add um, validations to the price attribute so adding uh, it to the description we adding a validation of description we learned the format option uh, using with for regular expression now with validates price let's try a new one numericality because we would want the price to be a numerical so the price should only accept numeric values by default this will match an optional sign followed by an integral or, or floating point number to specify that only integral numbers are allowed we can specify an only inter integer option so we can, instead of this we can give an only integer option and set that to true and this will ensure that only integer numbers are allowed for the price attribute but in our case we don't want this we want it it doesn't necessarily need to be integers it could be float floating point numbers as well so let's try uh, this out in our rails console um, let's reload the console and try creating a new product with the price value as um, 12.0 and let's try saving it and it saves successfully but and now if, if we give an integer number it would still save but if we gave it a letter let's see what happens or a string let's see what happens let's try saving it and it rolls back and let's see the error messages and it says price is not a number so that is the default error message for when you set numericality equal to true now with this our sixth session comes to an end Summarizing the topics covered here, we learned the basics of active record validations, including the helper's presence, length, uniqueness, format. So now it is time for a small trivia. 1. How can you get the error message for a particular attribute of a model? Say I would be interested only in the error message for code validation. I would like to see it print out so how would we access it the second question is how can you check if an active record object is a valid one or not thank you for watching and bye for now